thank you all for coming tonight. This is, uh, when I received the invitation to come, I, uh, as, as usual, declined. I, <laughs> because I'm flustered when, when asked to talk about it. Uh, any aspect of what happened to me or, or, or about my life. It was no accident that um, I ended up in prison for a crime I didn't commit. I didn't live a moral life when I was young. Uh, I, every opportunity uh, I had to do the right thing, I inevitably took a left turn and um, ended up embarrassing myself profoundly and my family. I quit school. I didn't get my education. The government knew this, and it made me an easy target. But that's not what it I'm here to talk about tonight. It's about second chances. I spent the entirety of my adult life in prison. I had opportunity to, to, to think about my life, to think about philosophy. I became a lover of, uh, of aphorisms and maxims. And while many of them seem silly, that they sound like they came out of a fortune cookie, many, many of them helped inform my life in uh, intellectual development. He who asks a question is a fool for the moment. He who asks no question is a fool forever. The early bird gets the worm, but the second mouse gets the cheese. <laughs> There was one that I learned that it sounds nice, but it ended up haunting me. And it was that a happy life is one without regret and without loneliness. And I realized that that was all that I had, was loneliness and regrets about how I had lived my life. And it made me all that that more miserable for all of those years. But unlike my neighbors that I grew up with, that I came to love as my own family, my friends, I survived that ordeal. I was given a second chance. And at first I was unable to deal with that. When I was first released from custody, the Innocence Project did what it could to make that transition past that last locked door as smooth as they could and met nothing but resistance because I found nothing to celebrate in my release from custody considering what had happened to me, to my friends, to my family, and worse, what had happened to the victim and her family. So I was incredibly angry and hostile. I was still a convict as I approached that last <coughs> The deputies that I was with, I knew these guys and I liked them and they liked me. And they were happy to, to see me finally regain my freedom. As I said, I wasn't happy about it. I was still cussing people and my lawyers and the Innocence Project, but I forgot all of that as I stepped through the door and I saw my mom and dad there. I had been in maximum security custody my whole life, which meant I had to visit my family through class on the telephone. I wasn't able to touch them. So coming through that door and being able to hug my mother for the first time in my adult life was more important, more profound than I'm able to express. To hug my father, to go home and to eat real food. To be able to walk in the grass with my bare feet and watch the moon rise. And yet it still wasn't enough. I was still angry and unable to deal with what was facing me. 
But the Innocence Project also knows something about second chances, and they know that simply securing the freedom of a fellow citizen and leading to them, leading them to the doors is not enough. So they have a program that's well funded and well supported, and the men and women that they help, they keep an eye on them for five years. They provide financial support and more importantly, psychological support to try to make that transition a little more smooth. And I think ultimately to get us to appreciate the value of a second chance and to release the anger. Most of the men that I know who were also released under the same circumstances got no second chance at all. They came home to nothing, their reputations ruined, no uh, opportunity to build a life for themselves. Some of them promptly drank themselves to death. Others have been reincarcerated. If there's any one thing that gives me hope for humanity, it is the idea of second chances. When I was first asked about this, uh, all I did was confuse myself thinking about it, trying to arrive at some statement, some conclusion that would have some substance. But I realized that the very nature of second chances implies a belief in fallibility, in mistakes, in misadventure, and it gives me promise for us all. It is a line of communication, I think, that we share with everybody in the world. I've never heard of a time or a place that did not believe in second chances. If there's one thing that connects us all, that gives us a common thread, a opportunity to talk to each other about something positive, I think it is that idea of second chances. Nine months out, I still hadn't left the house yet was with my mom and dad and enjoying their company again, helping raise my young niece. And the Anderson's Project uh, intervened in my life again. They called me one day and said that they were thinking about sending me to Nebraska to testify before the state legislature's Judiciary Committee on a pending bill to abolish the death penalty. I didn't say what came to mind, but I quietly declined. <laughs> Seeing no value in such an endeavor and was outwitted. My Innocence Project social worker called my mother. <laughs> Put her on it. So just three days later, I believe, I was on a plane to Lincoln, Nebraska, and wasn't happy about it. I spent that first night with a wonderful couple here in Lincoln, the Hargesheimers. We got up the next morning and Dick Hargesheimer drove me to the state capitol. And we walked through the door and the very first person that he introduced me to was my, the woman who's now my girlfriend. And I think maybe at that point I stopped struggling with to accept the fact that I was alive, that I was free, and that I was going to have to do something with my life. I couldn't stand in front of another human being, especially a woman who I found appealing. 
behaving like a fool. So I've tried to change my attitude a little bit about second chances, and I'm sorry to ramble, this is a difficult subject. I hope that you take away from this some hope for all of us as well, that, that, that there is a common thread through second chances because we all believe in them and we share them so readily with the ones we love and even with people who have offended us in some manner. Thank you all for it.